Hey, how are you doing today? Well, it is early February and the yard is not looking its best, but this is Southern California, so it's not a terribly cold day. I'm just in shirt sleeves and I got weeds growing every place that have to be tackled, but I thought I'd take you on a little tour so you can see what the garden is doing right now and where it's going to be going. The bamboo in the Zen garden is holding its own. Got birds in there. A nice little finch. And you can see. Well, we get sun on the very tippy tops of it. But it's a beautiful day. Some of the plants in the herb garden are looking good. Some are not. Some are just a little done. So we are going to be digging this up and replanting it sometime within the next month. Uh, I don't think we really properly prepped it last year. Well, I know we didn't because I did it. <laughs> and I was in a hurry. I wanted to get my hands in some dirt. But, uh, you know, the rosemary will be sticking around. That down there, in the, right there, right there. That's a little aloe vera plant that we bought and then didn't put in the ground, so it kind of started shriveling up, but now we've put it in the ground and it's finally getting some growth. Uh, the basil is looking a little sad, as is the parsley. Maybe that's, yeah, parsley. Mint is doing fairly well, as mint does, but the most bountiful, the chives, well, we keep eating the chives. <laughs> But the uh, Greek oregano is just, and we eat that more than anything. And that is just growing like gangbusters. And that we really are enjoying several times a week. Some wonderful Greek oregano. Remember the naked ladies? Well, the naked ladies aren't so naked anymore. They leafed out, but the flowers are gone. It's such an interesting plant. It comes up with these wonderful naked, naked stemmed pink flowers. And then the flowers go away and there's nothing there. And then the green leaves come up. So it's really a, a fun plant. We've been enjoying it. This, this tiny little plant is going to be an iris. And I have many of them popping up throughout the yard because I planted about 150 of them. Iris, 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 more irises. So this is going to be a field right here of about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So right in this little area, there's going to be eleven irises. And these are going to be the dark blue irises. Over here, we don't see them yet, but we're going to be having some lovely daffodils coming up near the irises. They will be showing up here soon. This guy right here is not an iris. This is the bane of my existence. I have made it my mission to try to eradicate all of these. This is a weed that I can't get up to because, hey, I back out of that, Monique. I cannot get to that weed right now to pull it. These are very invasive. It's a wild cucumber and they grow all over here and they come up from these huge central root balls. I dug one up and it was about 35 pounds. They're creepy and they are non-edible even though it's called a cucumber. They are hallucinogenic but they also call death, so, cause death. So it's not like I'm going to experiment with them and see if they're any fun. Yeah, here's one of those little bastards. Let's see if I can get to it without stepping on anything that I'm intentionally growing. Where are you? There you are. Eek. 
This is a tiny one. I hate these things so much. They're all over the place. Some of them are just really super invasive. Okay, enough with the weeds. I've planted wildflower seeds all over this slope, so that's why I don't want to climb on it. But I also have another field right here of irises, and this is what they're going to look like. So I'm going to have a river of these irises. It's going to be just amazing when they bloom. Here's a little area of the yard that is not yet worked on. You can see all of these gopher holes. The reason I am planting irises and also, also daffodils is because gophers don't like them. This is the slope behind my house where I have the fairy garden. I still have all the lights that come up in the trees. And back there is the Zen garden. And right here are a bunch of weeds that we need to tackle. But, you know, you can only do so much at a time. Some lovely narcissus blooming here on the slope underneath this big boulder. I kind of like the way they presented right in front of the boulder. Yeah, here's another one of these evil creatures. Gosh, I hate them. It just creeps me out even to touch them. I find I shouldn't be doing this on camera. Here we go. Yeah. Look, all those little shoots send out other vines. Oh, they're so invasive. Just nasty, icky creatures. Here is one of our magnificent agave plants. So beautiful. So sharp and scary to weed around them. Here's another beautiful agave. Here are some beautiful daffodils that came up. I purchase daffodils that bloom at different times. So I have early bloomers, mid-spring bloomers, late spring bloomers. The irises will come up in the summertime. So just have a constant stream of flowers coming up. And this is where we buried our Kiko. But we have daffodils coming up near him. And we planted forget-me-nots on his grave. We have a marker on order. It should be coming in at some point in the next few days. We miss him. These are some cuttings from our chalk sticks. The chalk sticks are growing so much. We do have to cut them back periodically. And this is one that we planted, oh gosh, a couple of months ago. And it seems to be growing, so Every time we get a cutting, we just like stick it in the ground and, and see if it grows. You know, if it grows, it's a free plant. Yay! Here is another beautiful agave. This agave, we don't expect to live for very long. We've lost a few agaves. The gophers have come and eaten them. We are planting new agaves. So we have some little baby agaves, like that one. But we have to plant them in wire baskets to prevent the gophers from eating them. This is some evidence of a gopher right there. And oh, let me see if I can get to it. This is a shoot that you can see the gophers ate the base of it. So this was going to be a nice agave plant, but Monsieur Gopher had a difference of opinion. Hm. There's the little baby agave plant. You can see the wire that we, well, Howard created a basket for him. You can see the chalk sticks are just doing beautifully. This is after we cut it back. It was starting to encroach on the angel wings. But super pleased with the chalk sticks. We feel like, what a great purchase. What a terrific landscaping plant. More chalk sticks going crazy over here. Just loving life. 
just really terrific landscape plant. These marguerite daisies are doing well. We can see little blooms getting ready to go on them, so pretty soon those should be popping. We are looking forward to that. You know I love me some free plants. I found some random shoots of calla lilies and I planted them and then dug them up and then planted them and didn't think they were there and they have come in and now we are getting some calla lily blossoms. So super pleased about that. Some blooms coming up on the marguerite daisies. Look at how big these have gotten. Just tremendous. I remember when we put this big boulder in the yard to take up space because, you know, it looks so empty and, and now we can barely find it. Birds are loving our little mini bird bath. We bought a pot and plugged up the hole with a cork and sealed it with solvent that we got pet store or something, aquarium solvent, uh, put the rocks in there, and boy do the birds love it. They are visiting all the time. It's really a delight. Here is another random calla lily that I planted that is about to open its blossom. Very pleased about that. The impatiens are doing well. We had to pinch them back recently. They were getting a little leggy. We want to keep those sassy. Planted these lobelia a while ago and something came along and munched them down to nothing. And we thought they were a goner, but they have really snapped back. And we are loving this little pop of color that we get right along the border. The catnip is looking a little raggedy, but that's because it was doing so well over in an area that I didn't want it and I needed to transplant it, so it's in recovery. I see new growth coming up. Um, it'll be shining again in a few months, but Colby loves being able to snack on catnip leaves, and every time I drive by one of my friend's houses, I just drop off a baggie full of the stuff. <laughs> Here's a gopher hole at the base of the palm tree. We don't seek to do anything permanent, like killing these rodents. For one thing, they just keep coming back. If you kill one gopher, another gopher just comes to take his place. And we don't choose to be people who kill an animal for our own convenience. We'll just make peace and find ways to live together. And here we are in this low shaded spot in front of my studio. This is where I found all of the calla lilies that I transplanted. And now that they're getting a bit of food and water, they're starting to thrive here. And oh look, what's all that behind them? Those are the naked ladies. This was a field of pink in the summertime, and now it's a field of green. There's a little empty space, and I'm not sure if I should just put a chair there, or if I should just plant more bulbs there and not worry about sitting there. I haven't decided. And here is the Zen garden, still unfurnished. Because I want to, I want to do it right. The Zen garden, as you know, is my favorite part of the yard. And I just haven't done anything with it yet. And the reason for that is because I I want to go shopping in person and everything's been shut down. When I look at this blank wall, whoop, sorry, that may have been a little dizzying. <laughs> when I look at this blank wall back here, I have concepts for what I want it to be and I need to go shopping at like the Rose Bowl flea market. I need to hit some really interesting, funky place to get what I want. This is our forever home, and we've only lived here not even a year. So, while it's frustrating that it hasn't happened yet, I don't need to run to Costco and buy something just to buy something. I'd rather buy something that's right, so I'll wait. 
and I will find the right thing when I find the right thing. It's like, it's like dating, you know? Y'all have dated the wrong people. And then you find the right one and you go, why did I waste my time? I'm, haven't been able to shop yet for this space. So we'll wait. In the meantime, it's kind of nice because as we've been doing everything else, this is the shadiest part of the yard. And so this is where we end up doing a lot of actual work because, well, it's shady and comfortable and zen. So I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of our yard as it's not at its best, but it's getting there. And it's all a process, right? I love you bunches. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and I will talk to you very soon. Look who came out to say hi. Hi there, Seagull. Yeah? Oh, that's a good kitty. That's a good kitty. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh, what a good kitty you are. What a good kitty. Look at those claws. Oh. Well, oh, then there's a Colby. They do love their catio. Hi, baby. Meow. I know. Meow. Really? What else is going on? Meow. Oh. That's what you say when I go down to the studio to work, right? You yell the whole time. Yeah, you do. Uh-huh. What else? Oh, sequel's here. Well, oh, sequel's leaving. Where's sequel going? Where's this sequel going? Hi, sequel. Where's Colby? These are a little bent now because Colby likes to climb them. We gotta do some repair work. What a pretty boy you are. Such a good baby. You're a good baby too, Colby. Can you say love you bunches? No, you don't speak. Can you say love you bunches? Colby. Oh. <coughs> Typical cats. They never ask. They never do it when you ask them to. Not that you've ever said love you bunches, but he gives me those looks. It counts.